Well, now at five, a Coin6 exclusive, getting people from the streets to shelters. And today we're getting an inside look at how outreach workers are trying to connect people facing addiction and homelessness to the resources they so desperately need. It is five o'clock and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jeff Gianola. And I'm Jenny Hansen in for Elizabeth Den. Now we are focusing on the solutions to the crisis on Portland streets. And today, part of the series you'll see only on Coin 6, diving into the work being done during the 90-day fentanyl emergency. And Brandon Thompson went out with those outreach workers. So Brandon, what did you see today? We saw people who had been through the struggle of addiction and homelessness helping other people find their path forward. We were with outreach workers with the Mental Health and Addiction Association of Oregon. They have been doing outreach well before the emergency, but how they do it provides a framework for how the city, county, and state can better coordinate outreach. Hello, outreach. On the streets of Old Town. Just trying to check on you medical wise. The Mental Health and Addiction Association of Oregon are making connections. I can't wait to see you, Jeremy. All right. We're in the business of giving hope and instilling hope and sharing our experience and finding strength in that. Rico and Brian are two of several outreach workers saturating downtown and Old Town the last several months. They start at an outreach van, working south until they get to the Behavioral Health Resource Center. Resources, showers, laundry. People need people they can trust in this community. You know, being out on the street and having these struggles, it's, um, you know, having somebody that's going to show up that they can count on. Uh, is really crucial. Um, a lot of people don't have those. Hey, we know each yeah. other. Good to see you, Jeremy. I love it. You remember their name, you're showing up for them, so, and building that rapport. It may take several visits for someone to be ready for services, and sometimes thank yous are unexpected. We like community help. <laughs> uh, warms my heart, man. That's what I do this for. But Brian and Rico have been in these shoes before. Brian had slept on these streets years before now, and Rico struggled with addiction. I was helped many years ago here in downtown Portland. Today, I get to be someone's guide and give people the same direction that I was given. What's unique about this model, the outreach workers can bring someone straight to the BHRC day center, getting them a shower or finally started on a plan to recovery. Detox and a shower and laundry right now. It's that model of connection on the street to immediate connection with services the fentanyl emergency is trying to solve in order to take advantage of the moment someone is ready to recover and giving them the place to. We want them to be successful. You know, that's the ultimate goal is to get success and to, to, to get out of the situation that they're in. I believe our city's hit an all-time bottom, but I don't call Portland, Oregon, Portland, Oregon. I call it Supportland, Oregon. And with the businesses and the community partners coming together, Attitude dictates altitude, right? And if we come together, the harder we hit bottom, also the higher we can bounce. So this team contacts around two to 300 people a day, around 100 people connect at the day center in downtown. The director of this, John Carp Evans, says recreating the immediate connection from streets to services and connecting the organizations along that path, that will be a key strategy after the fentanyl emergency is over. And we'll watch how that is reflected in the Unified Command's policy recommendations when this 90 days are up. And so great that they have people who've actually gone through a lot of this stuff yeah. than out there because it's probably more effective, I would think. Yeah, the people who they're trying to help mm -hmm. are more receptive, knowing that they are have been through it, mm -hmm. and it also shows them a path for what their future could be like. Yeah. Yeah. And their optimism. Yeah. I mean, that's a tool they're using out mm -hmm. there, as we heard. Yeah. yeah, the power of hope. Thank you.